What's going on YouTube? Hope you guys are doing great today. I'm really excited to kind of be talking about uh, one of my favorite cameras that I've been using in the past couple of months, and that is the Polaroid Originals One Step Two. Um, this is a really exciting camera. Um, I've had it for about two and a half months now, and you know, it's been a fun camera to shoot. It's taken me back to when I was a kid, um, shooting Polaroids back in the day with my family. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, so the camera costs a hundred dollars, um, us and, um, for a hundred bucks, the build quality is pretty great. Um, the, it's plastic, uh, all around, um, plastic viewfinder, plastic lens, uh, plastic body, everything. Um, but it's surprisingly strong. Um, I really have kind of beat it up over the past month. Uh, I've got a huge like scratch in the back here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a huge scratch on the back from just kind of like carrying around in my photography backpack and things like that. Um, but I've had the chance to take it out and kind of uh, shoot a lot of different situations. I've shot both uh, black and white and color film. Um, I haven't shot the iType film yet. It's made specifically kind of for this camera, but I've shot the 600 film, uh, which I prefer the look of, at least from the photos that I've seen. Uh, the color of 600 has just kind of always been that iconic um, film that I've loved since I was a kid, and I just kind of love it. Um, so, kind of going around some of the cool features of the camera, even though there's not really that many. Um, you've got your exposure compensation, exposure compensation uh, dial, uh, plus and minus. Um, you have your self-timer here at the top. Um, you have a flash. You have your shutter button. You have your film door. Um, and your viewfinder, uh, and a cool, lets you know how many, when you turn the camera on, it lets you know how many exposures you have left, so I have one left in this roll, pack, excuse me, um, you have your on-off button right here, you have a micro USB charging port for the rechargeable battery, for the iType film, uh, since there's a battery already in the 600 film, and you have a flash off button when the camera is on and you're taking a picture, so, and a tripod mount and that's really it guys it's pretty simple um like i said it takes both 600 and i type film so that's really exciting that you can use kind of the older style uh polaroid film and also the new style so i haven't like i said i haven't tested the colors out yet so i kind of want to buy a pack of i type film and shoot with that just to see what it's gonna be like i'm going to nashville next week so i'm really excited to try that out there and get some cool shots there um, kind of going over some one of the things I don't like about the camera, um, framing. Framing with this viewfinder is difficult. Um, I've probably burned four or five images just trying to get the hang of shooting with the viewfinder. I mean, uh, just like this shot right here, I um, swore was in the center of the viewfinder. But since it's not a... Uh, through the lens viewfinder, like the something like the SX70, you really have to kind of look at what you're framing. You really have to kind of look through the viewfinder and move over to the right just a little bit, or excuse me, to the left just a little bit, so you're getting that inside of the lens itself. Um, another thing I don't really like about this camera is it's got a plastic lens, so the images kind of come out really soft, which is something that I'm not a big fan of, but it's kind of the iconic Polaroid style, unless you're going to get into that SX-70 with a little bit more sharpness. So like something like this image compared to something like an Instax image, uh, Instax is sharp for what it is. I mean, I, I, it's definitely one of the sharpest instant films that I've ever used, but I just don't like the size, you know? So if we can like merge this, that'd be awesome. Um, I haven't shot with the Instax wide yet. I've heard good things about that and I kind of want to get that to test. So hopefully I can make a video um, testing that. Uh, but I have the Instax Mini not Mini 8, Mini 9, one of the two. Um, and I like to shoot with that a lot just because I kind of like being able to take it to a party or take it to a family gathering or wherever. And just if I take a photo, I can just hand it to somebody. And you can put it in your wallet. You can put it really anywhere. Whereas kind of with a Polaroid, it's, it's got a really specific place. You can't really, you can give it to people, but you can't just like, put it everywhere you can with an Instax. You can't put it in your wallet, it's just too big. But I like the square style of this. But I like the sharpness of this. Um, but I like the colors of this better. So it's a mix up really, honestly, for me. Um, 
but I really enjoyed shooting with this camera. I mean, it's, it's fun. You know, it takes me back to when I was a kid and when I grew up. It's, it's definitely reminiscent of those days. I love the film. I think Impossible's really done a good job with what they have. It's still not on the level of what it used to be, but hopefully we'll get to that point one day. Uh, I'd love to see development times kind of pick up a little bit, you know, 15, 20 minutes to get a film or a Polaroid fully developed is crazy. I mean, it's ridiculous compared to what it used to be, but obviously they're not using the same chemicals and things like that. So it, you know, they're having to re-engineer the entire process, but you know, I just kind of wish they could take a, take a hint from uh, Fujifilm, you know, and kind of, I don't know, learn from it, re reverse engineer something just to kind of find that development time because with an Instax photo, it's, I mean, two minutes, it's done. But with a Polaroid, you know, I'm waiting, you know, 20, 25 minutes for something to be fully developed. And that's just something that you don't always have time for. And that's, you know, I just don't have time to sit around when I'm shooting people or party on or whatever. I just don't have a place to put the film. So, cause you have to keep it dark. And that's something that I kind of really don't like either, whereas with Instax, I can just leave it out and it's fine. Um, with the Polaroid, you kind of have to put it in a dark room for it to develop a little bit better. Um, but all in all, honestly, for a hundred bucks, it's a great camera. The film is expensive, but other than that, if you're looking to get kind of get back into the game of Polaroid and you want to step away from Instax or something different, I definitely recommend picking one of these up and trying it out for a hundred bucks. So. If you like this video, make sure you click that like button down there and also hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this.